1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Test, 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 test. Oh. Open air. I'm, Open air. This is generally the day I've been waiting for for a whole year. Because today, a year ago, also in Amsterdam, we launched the Climate Action Challenge. And we launched it with one very simple question, which is this. A simple question for a very urgent and complex problem. What can design do to combat climate change? Of course, we didn't throw this question up in the air and have people respond to it. We did a very extensive research, as Richard mentions, with standby uh, to the causes and the effects of climate change um, and which aspects of climate change were uh, fit for designers to address. That's a, a process of three months that we then boiled down to a one-minute video which, we, which we, have, we launched the challenge. So I'm going to show you the video actually explaining the problem, how we framed it. We humans can easily adapt to changing temperatures, to different ways of living, to different kinds of food, to different ways of getting from A to B for a while. But can we adapt to climate change? Can we really change the way we live, the way we eat, the way we get our water, and the way we get our energy? Climate change is not coming. It's already here. Switching to clean energy is not enough. We need to adapt to a new, unavoidable reality. Ideas? Anyone? Calling on designers and creative entrepreneurs from all corners of the world to collaborate, to submit ideas or startups that can create true impact. Join the Climate Action Challenge. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the first pitch is Dracoria. You're here. The two of you will present? Okay. Perfect. Um, so you must be then Lot Amores Olivier, and your colleague is Jesus Edasma. Espinoza. Okay, I apologize, but <laughs> just to get the structure right, they will present a pitch in three minutes. The person raising their hand gets to pose the question, but they will leave us with a question. So don't repeat their question, just take their question in because that's something we'll debate at the end of this whole session. So without further ado, Lot, the floor is yours. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, hola, sí. Yeah. So, <laughs> we want to improve how people do ecosystem restoration. As you know, our planet is facing deep changes. Wildfires, deforestation, as CO2 increases, our problems are increasing too. But six trees can fix one ton of CO2. The problem is that traditional reforestation is expensive, high labor demanding, and inefficient. So what drones can do? <laughs> How drones can capture CO2? I'm Lot Amoros, founder of the Dronecoria project, and drones appear to be the easy answer to solve this problem. If we use the technology to destroy the forest, we could also use the technology to restore them. With the energy that we need to plant a tree, we can sow much more seeds. So imagine the quantity of CO2 that we can capture. In order to do this, we needed two prototypes. One drone for aerial sowing and a pelletized seed for direct sowing. So in this month, we needed to deal with kind of powerful materials and electronics until we made this drone that 
can carry 10 kilos of seeds, fly for 15 minutes, and where we can sow more than 150,000 seeds in just a single flight. So we need to deal with nature, and we understood that this is that this more difficult work with ecology than technology, and we need to practice with different materials for protect the seed from the environment and to retain water and protect from the predators. We also learned that we could use already existing materials, so we didn't need to build new machines for make our prototypes. We even learned about ourselves. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We love solve problems, but we are not businessmen. So we moved to NGO approach for make impact without the need of make profit. So the model that we would like to follow in the next years is that one of open source ecology or precious plastic. In order to empower people to use our technology to reforest the world together. Finally, the question that we would like to pose you is how we can organize a worldwide community of ecotech enthusiasts to reforest the world. Thank you, thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. Thank you a lot. One question. No? Sorry? Is it ready to fly? Is it ready to fly? Is it ready to fly? Uh, no, not yet. We just made <laughs> it last week. But we have everything together, so maybe we need one week for assemble the electronics and then push a button to start reforesting. And does it fly on solar, pa solar panels? <laughs> no. No, no, no. But <laughs> Sorry. Could, could, could be, could be. Why not? Why not? Of course. I had a question. It's maybe very pragmatic, but where does the water come in? From the, from the clouds. It's Just like rain. Okay, rain. you're... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, one last chance, but I did catch you by surprise earlier. Somebody with a question for Lot. Yes. Please state your name. Uh, Chris from the IKEA Foundation. Um, great presentation. Um, one human can plant four trees in the same time, but I imagine with the planting of the seed, you put it into the earth, you dig a little hole, you cover it up, and you sprinkle some water, whereas this scatters it, uh, over a long period of time. So is the germination rate the same as the four or is the germination rate different? We are experimenting, we are doing this test. So right now we cannot tell you like the ratio of germination, what we expected to boost the germination. Also in the traditional reforestation, after this first water, the plants is alone. So need to deal with stress of changing their conditions. Like this, the, the roots grow naturally without any stress. So we expect to have much more, much more improvement in the, in the germination. Also, we even add microorganisms to make the surrounding nutrients bioavailable. Mm. So we expect to boost the germination, but I cannot tell you exactly how much. Give it up one more time for Lotte Jesus, Draconia. Thank you. Thank you.